my name is Michelle and I'm here to share with you today why I love the ocean so very much. One of my absolute favorite things about the ocean is the vast mystery that it holds. Our oceans cover 70% of our planet, so that means that there is a whole heck of a lot out there that us as land animals without a boat or scuba diving equipment, you just can't experience every day. But one of my favorite places to visit the ocean is right here at the edge of the sea, where the waves come up and meet the land and then they retreat at a low tide, exposing this fascinating array of organisms that are both adapted for air and for water. So for the next couple minutes, we're gonna dive deep into the four phylums to understand what lives in this crazy place. Taxonomy is a system that scientists use to understand and organize the relationships between living organisms. Domain is the most broad category, and species, all the way at the bottom, is the most specific. The organisms grouped together in each level have similarities with each other. And today, we are focusing on the four phyla that make up a big chunk of the animals that live in the intertidal zone. The first major marine phyla is mollusca, which means thin-shelled and soft. Mollusks make up almost a quarter of all marine species currently identified. There is a ton of diversity in the mollusca group and many, but not all mollusks have a hard shell, like these California mussels and these tagula snails. Most have a squishy body and a strong muscular foot that helps them stay attached firmly to rocks like this limpet or to move around like this shield limpet. Another similarity among many mollusks are their spiny tongue, called a radula, that they use to scrape food off of surfaces. Colorful sea slugs, like these nudibranchs, have a radula, although they do not have shells. Another surprising member of the mollusca phylum is octopus and squid. Our second fabulous phylum is echinodermata, which means hedgehog or porcupine and skin, and includes organisms like sea urchins, sea stars, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. One similarity is that most echinoderms have spiny skin, just like a porcupine. Sea urchins are a perfect example and can be very spiny. Many sea stars also have somewhat spiny skin, like the white specks on an ochre star. Most adult echinoderms have radial symmetry, often in patterns of five, like this blood star and these leather stars. You can see this pattern in sand dollars as well. One interesting feature of echinoderms is that they have a water vascular system, which aids in locomotion and feeding. This system is composed of a small opening in the body that transports water to numerous tube feet, thus creating water pressure suction cups. Giant California sea cucumbers have a water vascular system and tube feet, but those spikes are actually quite squishy. Our third common phyla found in the intertidal zone is cnidaria, which means stinging nettle. Can you think of anything in the ocean that might sting you? You probably guessed jellyfish, and you'd be right. Although they do not live in the intertidal zone, sometimes you can find them washed up at the edge of the sea. Anemones are another common organism in the cnidarian phylum. They exhibit radial symmetry like echinoderms as seen in this moonglow anemone, but they have a much simpler body structure and no circulatory or respiratory organs, and only one hole for things to go in and out of called a butt gut, through which the anemone both eats and poops. Lastly, a feature that is unique to cnidarians is their special stinging cells called nematocysts, as seen here, which cover the tentacles of jellyfish, anemones, and corals. But don't worry about gently poking an anemone, their nematocysts are not strong enough to hurt humans. Our fourth and final fabulous phyla is arthropoda, which is the most numerous and diverse on Earth. Arthropoda means jointed foot or leg and includes species like crabs, isopods, shrimp, barnacles, and many types of zooplankton. These species, like this purple shore crab, are characterized by a hard exoskeleton and legs with joints. You can see the exoskeleton on this tiny isopod as well. Another interesting similarity among arthropods is that because their exoskeleton is so rigid, they must occasionally molt or shed in order to grow. You can often find the carapace of crabs washed ashore. Barnacles are a somewhat surprising member of the arthropods because their body, with the exoskeleton and jointed legs, is usually contained within their cone-shaped shell. Next time you visit a beach, make sure to observe a barnacle underwater and look for its tiny jointed legs combing through the currents for food. 
Hello, it's me, Michelle, again. Thank you so much for diving deep into the fabulous four phylums of the intertidal zone. I hope that you have learned something new today, and I hope that your appreciation for the ocean, your love for the ocean has grown. And I also hope that you have the opportunity to explore this amazing ecosystem on your own. Okay, thank you so much. Happy World Ocean Day.